Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, today is the, uh, the second, uh, or this is the second presentation that we're doing today with Spear MC. Um, many of you, I believe, were in attendance in the first presentation, which was a, uh, a mix between lecture and the exciting stuff, the demo uh, that you saw from Tarun. Um, if you did not attend that session, we can provide a link to you to the recorded version. Um, it will be equally as riveting, I'm sure. The uh, the group is is rolling in. We've got about, I'd say, 80% of the folks that have registered are now on. Um, the meeting is being recorded. The uh, attachment of this particular presentation is already out in the handouts section, so you, you'll have access to that. Um, at, at any time, once the recording is there, you will be able to grab the attachment and um, I believe you can actually download that attachment now from the attachments section. Um, but I encourage you to watch as we step through uh, a lot of dialogue. Um, if you were on the earlier session, you'll know that there's a questions box. Uh, the best way for us to have this as interactive session is to have a questions and answer answers uh, presented as we move along. Um, Tom, you'll see uh, Tom Treader and I will be co-presenting today. Uh, when one is presenting, the other will be monitoring the questions box. So uh, we should be able to catch those as close to real time as possible if you use that. Um, with, with that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and dive into the, uh, into the topics. We, uh, this is Tom, and this is me, Randy, and, uh, and we'll be presenting today. Um, we intentionally put our phone numbers and our email addresses because we encourage you to reach out to us anytime you choose, anytime you want. Um, you'll find that, uh, that uh, we're very responsive. Tom might be more responsive than me, but I'll get back to you, I promise. Um, Tom's going to cover the first half of the presentation today. I will wrap it up with the second half, uh, and here is our agenda. So, Tom, why don't you why don't you take us through the agenda and then on through the first three sections? I'll take it from section four on. Sounds good, Randy. Th thanks so much, and uh, thanks everyone for attending today. Um, so, so here's the agenda. We're going to do a, a very brief in introduction to Spear MC. Uh, like Randy mentioned, um, we're going to cover some polling questions and uh, just get a feel for where everyone is at um, with your current PeopleSoft environment and uh, some of the topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, next, we're going to cover um, a variety of pump strategies um, that, that anyone can deploy. Um, that's PeopleSoft customer and most likely you'll find all of you are probably applying, you know, Maybe all the above, maybe specific strategies, but um, we'll talk more about that. Uh, then we're going to talk about um, decustomizing PeopleSoft um, as part of your your PeopleSoft roadmap and, and long-term strategy um, and some different ways to do that. Uh, then we're going to talk about automated testing strategies. And, and for those of you who are in the earlier session for PTF, um, this is where we're going to uh, – cover some of the same topics. Um, so it may end up being a little bit repeat for some of you, but um, for those of you that didn't attend the first session today, uh, it, it, this will be you know, new content. Um, we're also going to talk about our, our testing as a service offering. So um, not only how you automate testing, but uh, how do you outsource that and apply that as part of your long-term strategy for staying current. Um, you know, if you're like most of our clients, uh, testing and, and the effort with testing is, is actually one of the biggest reasons why people don't stay current. Um, you know, along with customizing, you know, customizations and, you know, tr trying to, uh, you know, re retrofit those customizations to the new releases. So, uh, we're going to touch on both of those topics. Uh, and last but not least, um, ongoing Delta training. So um, obviously as part of staying current with PeopleSoft, 
a big part of that is all the new features and functionality that's released with each pun image. So um, we're going to talk about how you can uh, stay current with training and and apply you know those new features and functions uh, as part of your maintenance events. Uh, that that's about it. Um, uh, Okay, next slide. Uh, so about Spear MC. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with us, um, we we focus largely on PeopleSoft. Um, as you can see, we also cover Oracle Hyperion um, and Cloud EPM and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Um, from a PeopleSoft applications perspective, we we do work across really all the pillars: uh, financials. Um, HCM, supply chain, um, and, and even some campus solutions as well. Um, we, we do full managed services. Um, we actually have a whole portfolio of, of managed services, both technical, um, functional, um, and also a lot of what we're going to talk about today is um, services around keeping, getting clients current and keeping you current on, on PeopleSoft. Um, Training is a big focus for us. Um, so we, we have a, you know, as you probably seen from our emails in our webinars, um, we, we offer a variety of training on, on all sorts of people soft topics, technical tools, uh, applications. Um, and on the right, you know, we, we've already covered testing as a service, PTF. Um, we, we also do, um, Oracle Analytics Cloud. Um, you know, data management and analytics as well. Uh, next slide, Randy. Uh, so, so this is, uh, basically just an overview of uh, our, our physical location. So Sphere MC, um, does have coverage uh, across the U.S. We were founded in 2004 on Spear Street in San Francisco and, uh, you know, we, we probably have managing directors um, and, and employees in, in all the cities uh, located on this map. Uh, next slide. Okay, so right. we are going to uh, kick off with the, the polling. Let me uh, let me start with the polling. So I will say, Tom, that, that we had uh, the majority of the participants in the earlier call were able to do this on their screen. There were one or two that for some reason were were unable to click the answer to the poll. So hopefully uh, you're able to do so. If you cannot, go ahead and just shoot in a question. Um, yeah, if you if you could just let me know you weren't able to answer the question, but give me the answer that you would have had. Um, hopefully we're able to. It looks like 23, 27 percent of uh, you have responded. 10% are not paying attention. Kidding. I saw some people just jumped on their screen. I've got about 60% in, almost two thirds. Um, anyone having trouble? Uh, okay, yeah, Elaine, sorry. We, we we had that problem earlier. I don't know what the, the common theme is and folks that couldn't. Um, if you want, you could just shoot me, Elaine, your your response in the uh, in in the form of a question, um, and uh, we'll get you included in the in, in the tally. Uh, we did get. Now we're look, looking at about 64 percent. I'm going to go ahead and close it out and display the results here. All right, Tom. What are you seeing? Okay, I'm. It looks like uh, it's almost split um, a, a third across at least the, the top three. Um, so yeah, a third of you are actively working on a strategy. Um, some have the strategy, uh, but but haven't quite deployed it yet, and and a third not having a, a strategy yet for staying current, um, and, and then a handful. Uh, asking about Tom. So I'm guessing, you know, those in, in this last bucket, you, you may not be on 9.2 yet and, and be, you know, part of the latest, um, latest release where, where POM images are being applied. Uh, so this is good. We've got, you know, a good, good mix of folks in the audience in terms of where you're at with your roadmap. 
All right. Uh, I'll go on to the next poll, Tom, and then uh, there's a third poll I think I'm going to save for a, a later section. Um, let me go ahead and launch this one. What is your organization's plan for PeopleSoft hosting? And Elaine, I suspect you will have trouble with this one as well. Um, not able to click your screen. I'm not sure. Not sure why that was. Oh, Tarun tells me that if you are full screen during the poll, you have to return to the windowed mode to participate. Thank you, Tarun, for looking into that for us. All right, we've only got 45% of our precincts reporting. I don't think we've lost everyone yet, but uh, we shall see. Okay, now we're jumping up. I'm going to give it two more seconds. Get your votes in. I'm over 65%. That's about where we stalled out last time. So I'm going to go ahead and close it out and share the results. Okay, so this is uh, interesting. So, um, you know, slightly more than half, 62% are planning to stay on premise uh, with your PeopleSoft applications, and the rest of you um, are are considering moving to, to cloud uh, infrastructure, and, and uh, the last 15% uh, does want to move or planning to move to a cloud-hosted solution. So, so that's great. We will talk uh, a little bit about OCI uh, later on in this presentation. Um, a, as you know, there's other, you know, o Oracle's cloud infrastructure also competes with uh, Amazon Azure and AWS. But, you know, from a PeopleSoft perspective, there's certainly uh, many benefits for being on OCI, which we'll, we'll talk about. Okay, thanks for the, the polling, Randy. Yep. Okay, so um, I, I'm guessing most of you are familiar with these topics, but just wanted to cover, you know, some of the basic tools around PUM and, and the maintenance events uh, in PeopleSoft. So PeopleSoft Update Manager is, is the lifecycle management tool to apply maintenance. Um, so I, maybe a handful of you that aren't on 9.2, so that's part of the new architecture for downloading um, what are called PeopleSoft update images. So uh, the, the PI, PeopleSoft update images or PIs, uh, those are actually the, the bundles of um, fixes and, and basically code, uh, the latest code set for PeopleSoft uh, that get applied and uh, basically applied to your current environments. Uh, those come out four to five times a year, approximately quarterly. Um, so, and, and then you also have other um, uh, code releases that are done as well, and that's really what the last two bullets cover. So, PeopleSoft release patch sets. So, those are critical fixes that can't wait for the next PUM image, um, and, and those are a way to basically, you know, get emergency fixes um, out to customers and applied. Um, and, and the last bullet here is uh, proof of concept patches. Um, so those are usually uh, created by Oracle for specific customer um, issues uh, to resolve, you know, specific defects. Um, so the POC gets applied, usually tested by that customer, and uh, depending on the results, uh, that that proof of concept fix and code may get bundled into the next image. Um, for that customer, they're, they're actually, uh, if, if it's a successful result with testing, they can apply it and, uh, you know, it, maintain it in their environment until they, and then when they do the, the next PUM image, uh, then they're, you know, fully current um, with the latest release, but it allows them to get that fixed immediately from Oracle. Okay, uh, next slide. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with those terms. Uh, this is actually a slightly dated uh, PeopleSoft roadmap slide that gives you kind of some high-level metrics. Um, so as you know, Oracle has a rolling um, 
10 year support window right now for PeopleSoft. So um, support is, you know, promised until 2030 and, and likely very well beyond that. Uh, believe it or not, there's still new customers going live on PeopleSoft and many customers are actually continuing to invest um, with new modules and, and, and lots of new projects with PeopleSoft. So it's very much alive and well um, and, and, and even competes with all the, you know, all, all the SaaS applications out there, including, you know, Oracle Cloud and Workday. Um, yeah, Tom, one, uh, one point to note that you're right, this is a bit dated. The, uh, last week or the week before during the, uh, during the Innovation Week, um, we heard from Paco, and, and this date now is officially 2031, um, with the intent that it will continue to roll as a 10-year as a window, um, giving anyone, in the unlikely event that Oracle at some point decides that they are going to deprecate the product, you'll have you'll have 10 years. So, so the date officially uh, two weeks ago was was declared to be 2031. Right. Uh, yeah, in the, in the 1500 plus new features delivered, I, I think we're well beyond that at, at this point. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, literally hundreds being released e each year. So, um, yeah, I mean, PeopleSoft, uh, is, is definitely, you know, alive and well. And, you know, I think everyone would probably agree if, if you're current, um, there's been more changes in the last few years than, you know, honestly, I've more than I've seen than almost my entire career with some of the new tools and technologies. Okay, this this next slide um, it talks about uh, you know just the continual improvement with PeopleSoft Update Manager. So again, this you know whole concept of come images and uh, being able to apply those you know those new features and fixes at you know at, at your t on your timeline. Um, but but they are being released continually through Oracle, um, you know, approximately quarterly. Um, and, and then, of course, the um, ad hoc patching and regulatory updates, uh, both on the HGM side with tax updates, um, 1099s, and, and other reporting on the financial side. Um, so these are all kind of key benefits of, of PUM and why Oracle moved to this new um, kind of code deployment. Uh, methodology. Okay, now in terms of strategies, I mentioned earlier there there are several strategies, and and I think what most of you are probably doing this would actually be a good kind of survey question, but uh, selective adoption is is one, um, and and you may find you end up needing to apply all of these strategies together, uh, depending on what your needs are. Uh, but selective adoption, you know, with this new release, uh, you know, process allows you to apply um, updates, um, at, at, you know, as needed. So, you know, it gives you a chance to provide um, patches and fixes uh, that are critical to you and your environment um, where they have, you know, in the past prerequisites um, for code uh, or, or you know, you may apply a group, a bundle of fixes together and it ends up, you know, it's a much bigger scope of testing and may cause other issues. Uh, this selective adoption approach allows you to really kind of apply a laser-like, um, you know, strategy to, to applying the code and functionality that you need. So much more flexible approach. Um, so it can be applied, you know, both for business and IT requirements. Um, it again eliminates the the bigger scope of um, what most get currents and, and upgrades are are about um, by again just applying that specific code that you need. Um, and uh, again, it allows you to stay current without you know big budget hits as well. Sorry, Tom, I didn't mean to advance that quickly. <laughs> No problem. Okay, next next slide. It's just finishing up. So uh, the next strategy is, and really event is full get current. 
So that's basically when you're applying all the PUM images, you're accepting all the code um, that's in the PUM images to get you to the current release. Um, this may also include people tools upgrades as well. Um, as you know, tools upgrades uh, come, you know, approximately every six, you know, 15 to 16, 17 months. So almost every year and a half, um, sometimes less than that from Oracle. Uh, so, you know, you have really both of these events um, that you need to apply to get current. Um, so in, in this case, you know, the testing and, and changes and potential impacts are much bigger than uh, applying a selective adoption approach. All right, and uh, like I mentioned, you, you know, you'll find you very likely need to apply both of those. So, you know, if you're on the HDM side, tax updates, you know, you'll need those quarterly. Um, and, and then the other regulatory patches that come out, you know, you'll always want to apply those in between your full get current. Okay, this next slide on PUM architecture. So this um, really kind of describes, you know, what, what the architecture looks like uh, from an infrastructure and server standpoint uh, that supports this new methodology. So, you know, you have the, the various stack of servers, uh, database, file and batch server, app server, web server, um, uh, secure enterprise search server, um, so uh, that's Elasticsearch. Um, so that, that does require it, its own server. Uh, it can be shared. You know, it, it, in a lot of cases, these servers can be shared and, and most very frequently are shared in non-prod environments. Um, and, and then in the bottom left corner is probably the most important um, piece related to PUMs, and that's Oracle's virtual box um, for for uh, update images. So this is where your PUM server resides and, and where you download the images. And uh, you can actually go in and test, you know, test in that latest image that you've downloaded. Um, so that's kind of the key change uh, moving to 9.2, as many of you that are on 9.2 probably already know. Uh, so this this slide is a, a really good slide that kind of walks through the methodology around applying maintenance. Uh, so if you see, we have two swim lanes here, one at the top around all the key functional activities uh, that occur as part of those maintenance and upgrade events. And at the bottom uh, is the swim lane around the technical activities. And we, we've also included the data databases um, that kind of gives you a feel for you know, from an infrastructure standpoint, what databases are you having to stand up um, in instances to support kind of the whole life cycle methodology of uh, getting current? So um, I won't necessarily go through all of these, but I'm going to talk about kind of the upfront uh, phases. So in that very first column where it says scope and fit gap. So from a functional standpoint, you know, what the first thing you're going to want to do is, um, I'm sure most of you have used the cumulative feature overview tool, the CFO tool. Um, it, it's actually, a, you know, a very handy tool. So it allows you to pick your current product and your current PUM image um, that, that's your source. And then you can pick what you're migrating to in terms of your maintenance. And it, it will actually spit out all the new, all the features that um, you'll be adopting by uh, applying that maintenance. So, you know, big part from a functional standpoint is looking through all of those features, looking at how it applies to your business, your requirements, your customizations, really helps you plan out um, your project and identify maybe what features you want to adopt, um, what you know, what impacts you may have with the code that you're going to be bringing in. And, um, you know, also testing, you know, helps you plan out testing and resources for the project. Um, you may find there's some features you want to implement as part of your maintenance event. There might be others that you choose to delay as a future phase um, or initiative after you get current. So, um, and, and that's also where training comes in as well. And, you know, Randy will talk about that more later. Uh, you know, one of the 
uh, services that we offer as well as part of our, our Get Current uh, offering. Um, at the bottom, uh, oh, sorry, 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 Randy. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'll talk about the first two columns uh, and, then, and then we'll move on. At the bottom from a technical activity standpoint, uh, this is where your system administrators or architects are uh, downloading the PUM images. Um, you'll you'll want to create a new demo environment on, on the latest release. Um, there's actually a couple approaches there. Um, a lot of you can actually create a brand new demo uh, just with the latest code set, or you can actually choose to upgrade your current demo uh, using using the new image. Uh, that's that's really kind of an option. Uh, you know, to go either way. Um, but uh, bottom line is you need you need a current demo, um, and then from that you can run your comparison reports um, to find out you know what what impacts you might have um, for your customizations, um, and that'll be analyzed and uh, that'll actually you know help move you into the development retrofit for again any of those um, technical objects reports interfaces. Um, you know, customizations uh, that you're going to need to retrofit as part of the maintenance. Um, so that's, you know, that brings us to kind of the second column, the initial pass. Um, so that's where, you know, that's where you're actually um, creating a new development environment, usually getting a new, a fresh copy of production, um, applying the new image and code. Um, you're, you're looking at your compare reports and the developers, that's where they'll start doing their first pass of uh, retrofitting all the technical objects. Uh, from a functional standpoint, um, you know, that's where you could be uh, doing prototyping. Um, you know, once you get that environment, you could actually start prototyping from the demo environment, but, you know, typically it's always nice to have your own data, your own configuration. So that's where, you know, you'll need that, you know, that first pass environment to do your um, full prototyping. Uh, in your own environment. Uh, and then the rest of the columns, uh, you know, that's where all your testing cycles come in. Um, and again, that's where your uh, automated testing comes into play. Uh, it, it really helps uh, accelerate and automate a lot of the work that's done. You know, it, it, it's more than half of the project is going through those test uh, cycles and, and troubleshooting um, any of the issues. Um, and then last but not least, you're deploying and going live. Okay, lot, lots going on in that slide. Uh, so hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, so the next few slides talk about a sample client um, or customer that's, uh, that's behind. So kind of a case study, if you will. Uh, so in this case, the customer's behind um, eight, eight PUM images. Uh, they're on People Tools 856. Um, which is only supported through October of 2020. So they're, they're potentially looking at right now, uh, you know, a tools upgrade to 858. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, um, People Tools 858 was just released for on premise customers um, just, uh, I think it was a week or two ago, um, mid April. Uh, so, you know, it is G G GA right now. Um, so, so everyone can. Start planning their, their tools upgrade to 858. Um, and you know, from a from a financial standpoint, we're up to PUM 35. So one approach in, in this scenario would be to approach it in two ways. Uh, the first wave would be getting current up to PUM image 32. Um, and you could evaluate selective adoption for the, the images 33 through 35. So this is kind of taking a much, you know, kind of a bite out of the jump because there is, you know, there's qu quite a few number of images, a lot of functionality along with the tools upgrade. Um, so wave one gets you uh, most of the way current in terms of the application. Um, and then wave two is where you would do the tools upgrade and then a limited update in terms of pump images. Um, so that way to get you fully current uh, through the current releases. 
One uh, one thing I want to call out um, on uh, on the support. I, I believe that Oracle uh, is is announcing some uh, some COVID nineteen actions that that uh, I think there's consideration of extending some of these support dates. Um, so I, I would just encourage you to look at at, uh, at Oracle's site to validate what the what the uh, current support through dates are. Um, but I know that there was talk of, of extending those because of the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, that, that would be great. Much, much needed relief, I'm sure, for many, many organizations. Um, okay, ne next slide. Um, so this uh, this just kind of shows you the timeline and, and phases of each of the uh, phases. So we've got wave one, um, you know, doing the, the feature overview, two weeks, um, applying the PUM images, uh, you know, much smaller scope um, in non-prod, um, regression testing four to six weeks, and then um, applying the PUM images in prod, so the final deployment. Um, and then wave two shows you the um, tools upgrade and, and full get current. So you can see that timeline uh, is definitely a, a lot larger. Um, I forgot to mention, you know, typically what, what happens too during the tools upgrade is you're refreshing hardware. So that's another reason why um, the tools upgrades typically take a little bit longer, uh, especially for those on-prem uh, clients. Um, if you're on OCI, again, one of the big benefits of OCI, um, there, there isn't, there's no need to procure hardware and prepare new hardware. So it's, you know, one of the big benefits of OCI is applying those tools upgrades and um, PUM images is, is much, much easier and it accelerates this timeline. Uh, next slide. Randy, anything you'd want to add there on that? Uh, well, uh, one one thing I will say I will I will talk about here uh, in a bit is the the regression test cycle, um, the the timelines that we had for this particular customer and the regression test cycles uh, for both waves was relatively short uh, compared to what we would normally do in a a, a large scale image update. Um, and, and the reason we were able to accelerate our regression test cycles was because we had previously uh, built out some some uh, automated test scripts and we're ready to use those in the regression cycles. Okay, th thanks, Randy. Yep. Okay, the next se section talks about decustomization strategies using uh, m many of the new tools uh, available at PeopleSoft. So this. This slide uh, kind of walks you through kind of a waterfall um, map here of, of uh, options with customization. So uh, first step here is uh, doing an inventory of customizations. And, and I'll just call out a really a best practice is to have, you know, have a master list of all the development objects. Uh, again, you know, all the reports, interfaces, customizations, workflows, um, all those development objects that you know you have that are critical to the business, um, you know, it's really a best practice to have those all mapped out, um, usually in a matrix, could be Excel, um, but, you know, proactively manage those, you know, from, from release to release. That's one of, one of the things we, we do as part of, you know, our, our work with um, helping clients get current. Um, so, you know, take that list of customizations, reconcile them to the requirements and the delivered functionality coming out in the PUM image. Um, you know, that includes the application functions and the tools. Um, you know, with what we're going to talk about here in these slides, that every release that we're getting new tools to help you decustomize. So, um, you know, every upgrade you do, you may find there's another tool available uh, that you can, you know, help help you know get rid of your customizations. So with this first um, decision box here, uh, it, you know, it, towards the top, um, if you want to implement the delivered functionality, you can you can get rid of the customization. So that's kind of your first decision point. Um, that the next question here is if 
there's a requirement, again, you have a custom development object um, that can be met with a configurable tool set. Um, again, we'll talk about those in some of the upcoming slides. Um, you can eliminate that customization. Um, and then going from that box, uh, the next uh, question here is, can you, can you isolate your custom code um, with one of the delivered tool sets? So isolating it allows you to, you know, streamline how you're applying maintenance and, um, you know, helps you with retrofit activities. So if you can isolate it, then you know apply one of those bolts, one of those lifecycle management tools um, to isolate that code, and then they'll really la that leaves you with uh, you know the default or the last resort is maintaining and carrying forward that that customization or custom object. Yeah. And and one thing I want to point out, Tom, is that uh, we actually had uh, our our first webinar last week, last Friday, was a full hour just on the decustomization tool set that, that uh, Oracle's been delivering over the years. Um, so if you're if you're really interested, we're gonna we're gonna hit a few highlights here over the next two or three slides. But uh, I, I encourage you to go out to the the go to stage channel of for Spear MC's recorded webinars. It's out there. It's it's well worth uh, sitting for for the hour. Uh, you'll get to see how there's an animation that goes along with this particular graphic, um, and uh, and then of course we get into some some very detailed specifics on uh, on many many topics so um in fact i think they're on the next few slides tom are we uh, yeah are we are we, yeah. are we tracking yeah okay take them yeah so I, i'm going to go through these pretty quick because just looking at the clock um you know we've got about 20 minutes left and, and again like randy said you can follow the the website link here um, we're also going to make these slides uh, available for everyone so you can kind of walk through these. So um, at, the, at the very top here, the custom portals, menus, and workflow. Um, so the old box kind of represents how those requirements were handled in the past. Um, it, on the box in the right are some of the new tools delivered to handle those requirements. So we've got work centers, nav collections, um, which allow you to group together, you know, menu navigations, and then unified navigation, which um, there there was, if for those of you familiar with Interaction Hub, um, unified navigation allows you to basically consolidate um, access to HR, HCM, and financials um, within both environments. Um, so you're, you don't have to log out of one environment, log into the other. Uh, this next slide talks about you know specific terminology it's really some of the GUI um, some of the page elements um, in the past uh, if you had to change terminology how values were defaulted setting required fields you would actually have to go in and do a customization modify the page or people code um, you know with the new tool sets we've got page and field configurator and the data privacy framework, which allows you to do data masking and encrypt um, some data elements that may be sensitive. Um, again, very common for HCM uh, and, and common in financials, specifically around banking and you know other sensitive information. Uh, next slide talks about uh, specific data entry needs, um, you know, and tailoring tailoring the the user experience. Um, in the past, you'd have to, you know, modify pages, maybe to streamline them um, or put them in specific orders. Uh, some of the new tools, activity guides, allow you to do really multiple transactions all within a single component um, and kind of consolidate your activities in one. Um, forms and approval builder allows you to create forms and capture data without having to create new applications. Um, drop zones allow you to add fields on pages. Um, now with tools 858 in classic pages and fluid. Prior to 858, that was just available in fluid transaction pages, which really kind of limited the tool set. Um, so movement of data in and out of PeopleSoft. 
um, in the past pretty much required custom development um, with the new tools um, we've got you know lots of options for handling data integration and migrations um, application data sets very handy for migrating configuration and setup data um, that that's one we don't see you know not being used uh, as extensively but will be you know with with people getting current okay uh, so this slide uh, covers covers some of the other webinars that we did again we talked about that but um, we have it's a series with four parts um, so yeah, each, each uh, uh, these are actually uh, session. These are actually the trainings right so these these are the four trainings that these these you would sign up and, and pay for to attend uh, where where we're going to have live virtual training I think they're they're four hours each spread out over four days um, and and we've we've chunked up the topics so that they're bite-sized so that if you're interested in uh, in getting full-blown training on on any or all of those decustomization tools uh, th this is when they've been scheduled so uh, yeah Tom uh, I didn't tell you this in June starting in June is when we're gonna uh, be, be scheduling a, a quite a series of live virtual trainings, which will allow students to take the training from wherever they're working, maybe still you know, in their homes at that time, um, and, uh, and not have to take a, a whole day to do that training, just take, carve a, a portion of the day. Okay, thanks Randy. Yep. And, and so this link is just slightly different. The links we saw before were the pre-recorded links. These would be uh, where you would go and uh, sign up for uh, the, these would be the training events, the live virtual training, but there's also um, additional free webinars. And I think I've got those listed at the very end of the deck. Great. All right. Okay, Randy, I think uh, I think you're going to take take the rest here, right? I will. I'll I will. turn it over to you. Okay, we've got 15 minutes. I'll move I'll move at a at a brisk pace. Uh, I I do think many of you were on the call earlier when we were talking about or the webinar earlier uh, when we talked about PeopleSoft test framework. So this is the automated testing tool that that is delivered by Oracle. Um it was used originally by Oracle for their own regression testing before they released uh, patches and fixes um, and it, it became clear to them that there was commercial applicability here so they, they made it available to their customers um, and they made it available for free because the value is is using the tool for the exact purpose of our conversation today staying current right to uh, Tom said it at the beginning of the the session the reason people fall behind is that they they don't have time to test and so um, automating testing and getting a library a robust library of repeatable reusable uh, test scripts can drastically reduce the amount of regression test cycles and of course as you start to get more and more current and have larger gaps between images uh, those cycles can shrink to uh, Days from from weeks and and uh, potentially even months before. Um, so I won't belabor too much of the PTF details. It's it, we believe it is a critical component for staying current, um, and you should use it to get current. Right. So so build your scripts. Use those scripts to help you get current and. And they don't go away, right? You keep them, you use them in every image to help you stay current um, on a very consistently tested basis. Um, it, the implementation for PTF can be fairly short. It's, uh, it's about 10 weeks. Uh, part of the reason is that for each HCM and financials pillar, um, if you were to utilize Spear of C to help you with this, we have almost a thousand, I think it's over a thousand pre-built scripts that we come with. And all we need to do then is, is start to uh, modify those for your particular organization. Um, one recommendation is that you upgrade to People Tools 857 if you haven't, uh, or 858 if you're so inclined. 
um, and try to get to the latest funds. But this certainly doesn't exclude someone who's on an older version of people tools. Uh, it's just that PTF is uh, is really enhanced. Right around 856 is where it hit its sweet spot. 857 and then 858, it, it just keeps getting better. Um, it, it, this effort then includes building out the, the rich list of scripts and shells. Um, and then you can get into a uh, regression testing contract with SpearMC. And that's what we're going to be talking about in a, a few slides. We call it testing as a service. And it's a service that we offer uh, because customers are asking for it. They, they want to get out of the testing business. Regression testing, image after image, is, uh, is not something that's sustainable internally. Uh, but, but it is something that organizations are very interested in outsourcing and allowing um, those of us that, that do it and do it frequently and do it well uh, to, to take over for your organization. Okay, um, and Tom mentioned OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Um, we, we actually have a, a program where we can help to do a, a cloud shift, bring you onto the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, um, and, and we highly recommend that you think about that for a test environment uh, because, as Tom mentioned, the, uh, the availability of the images, the availability of the latest tools releases come out about six to eight weeks earlier um, on OCI than they do to the, to the general on-premises customers. Um, and another benefit for having OCI is, the, is how quickly you can spin up another image and how uh, easily you'll have access to the demo environments with the latest images all, all uh, resident. So it's, it's part of what we believe is a, a state current philosophy, even if you have no plans to ever migrate your production environment into a cloud uh, environment. Uh, test and particularly testing on a frequent basis for the images as they come out is a perfect reason to uh, to move a, a version of your solution onto the cloud okay uh, this was discussed in some detail on a previous call i'll just point you to this discussion the oci discussion um, Again, we we highly encourage that you do that, especially if you have your library of test scripts that are built in PTF. You want an environment that is the gold environment for those scripts to maintain those scripts and the integrity. Um, and and we found that the best way to do that is to go through uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure um, and have your test environment there. So our testing as a service, SpearMC's testing as a service, is well, we've got a lot of options that are out there for you. Uh, it does include pulling together your uh, your strategy, your your PUM strategy, um, and then evaluating on a case by case basis whether it's annual, quarterly, whether it's uh, you know half a year, uh, maybe it's just selective adoption, three quarters and, and full get current uh, annually, all kinds of options for you. Um, we've seen it all. And the beauty of testing as a service, what it includes is that test script maintenance. So once those PTF scripts are created um, and used and functioning, at each and every image that they come out, each time a page is converted from classic to fluid, we take those scripts and we update them so that they are maintained with the with the latest, most current versions, um, and uh, and you continue to get the benefit of your, a, a system that is fully regression tested, uh, handed over, and all you need to do is evaluate our results and do your own rounds of unit or user acceptance testing. Um, and uh, quite easily stay current without the time and, and uh, uh, expense that, that comes with your, your employees having to consistently and constantly do rounds of regression testing. So testing is the service, a closer look. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about outsourcing your regression testing. Move it, up, move it from in-house to, 
to us, uh, Spirit MC, let us handle the script development and let us handle the maintenance of those scripts. We provide you the results. You get to evaluate the results and decide whether you're going to apply your images, whether you're going to selectively adopt, or whether you're going to wait. Um, this is a service line within Sphere MC's managed services, um, and uh, we've got several customers that are now taking us up on the offer to uh, to automate and and uh, outsource the regression testing cycles. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we have many flexible subscription options. Okay, one of the things that we do when we build PTF scripts, we we deliver reporting that is not something that Oracle has built. So we've got some some uh, PTF test evidence reports that uh, are, can be generated by test cycle or by date or by range, all kinds of flexible uh, ways to evaluate your testing. And these test reports, they, they come out in a it was pivot grid-like format. Um, you can drill into the details, and from the details, you can drill down to the test case, and from the test case, you can drill down to the screenshot of an error. All, all delivered in one, one succinct evaluation tool set. Um, and we believe that this not only shortens the testing effort, but also the, the evaluation and the resolution of the testing so that so that your team your your team within your organization can spend time evaluating the results evaluating the issues solving the issues rather than just creating and, and mechanically regurgitating the test cycle time after time okay so that was my testing as a service and ptf pitch to you. I highly recommend that you consider PTF. Uh, if you weren't on today's call, go take a look. The the recording, I think, is almost done. It, it, it takes almost uh, as long as the session to process and post it. It should be out there. If you weren't on this morning, go take a look. It's It's worth a listen. Okay, I'm gonna to get to the last topic and we only have seven minutes. I haven't seen any new questions hit the board yet. So uh, I think there's only one slide on this last topic. And that is this, the Delta training. So what do I mean by that? Tom said it many times, Oracle has delivered probably more enhancements in images as they've been released than enhancements you got between versions 9.0 and 9.2. So not, since 9.2 came along, there have been more enhancements than, uh, than we've seen. And uh, they're hard to keep up with. So, so how do you know what is there? How do you even know what you have currently that you, that you just didn't know existed? And it's important, we believe, for staying current to have sort of a grassroots movement in your organization, right? Call it peer pressure, call it whatever you want, right? The, the features and functions that you know exist, that may even exist in the it, it, without even needing to apply an image or an update. Um, if you know they're there, you could start demanding them and you could start getting your user community excited to use them so that, so that they are the ones driving the demand for the staying current, getting current, um, and, and and you can turn that into a cycle where where they get to continually evaluate what's new. Well, there's several ways to find out what's new, what's out there. There's of course the PeopleSoft Information Portal. We've got the link to the portal out there, uh, and and for, on the portal, by the way, is the custom the cumulative feature overview tool that Tom talked about, where you just put your your product and your your from image and your to image, and it lists every feature and function uh, and fix that was delivered in those images in between, um, and lots of information out on that portal about what's in the pipeline, um, in, including your opportunity to suggest new features and functions. Uh, so highly recommend the PeopleSoft Information Portal. If you have not been out there, it, it, it's, it's a must see. Uh, if you are a member of a Quest user group uh, community, I, 
use that community. There is so much information on and 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 sessions from previous conferences, all posted, uh, group discussions. Um, if you're not a member of the Quest user group, I, I, I recommend that you look into a user group community. Um, Quest, we are, are uh, very, very strong partners of, and uh, we, we just can't speak highly, highly enough. Um, Delta Trading, if you subscribe to Spiracy's Testing as a Service subscription, it includes a quarterly analysis and training of all of the new features and functions for the modules that you own. So if you if you subscribe to Testing as a Service, you are subscribing to quarterly Delta Training. Um, there's the, the PeopleSoft Now video series. You can actually get, those from, get to those from the information portal or just out on YouTube. Um, Spiram C has has started a YouTube channel, and we are we are posting similar uh, training videos, smaller in length. Um, the PeopleSoft demo environment you should have, and if you have an OCI environment, you will have a demo environment that's always kept current, always with the latest image, so that you can just go out and play and learn and and figure it out yourselves, uh, because. Because the user IDs that are delivered in that demo environment have access to those latest tools and functions. So uh, this is a great way to train yourself uh, on the deltas. And of course, there's people people books out there. Um, there's our live recorded webinars, but there's of course many others from our esteemed uh, colleagues that that all care about the, the PeopleSoft ecosystem. Um, all of these are sources for you and to get current and stay current you use these to drive demand you get your users to be the ones demanding currency and you've got your use case and and it should make it an easier path for you i have one more poll i wanted to, i wanted to see and this is a poll where we can um we can decide uh you could i think let's see I think you could pick all that apply on this particular poll. Um, and, and I just want to know, what do you do today? What are, how do you learn about new features, functions? What is it that you, uh, that you care to see? Um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed of all of you that have voted. Nobody's saying instructor low. There's one or two. Good. Rolling in, rolling in. We've got one minute left in the session. I believe I was on my last slide. I want to post it. It looks like you're getting there. I'm over 50%. I apologize to anyone who tried to vote, and I'm cutting you off right now. I'm going to close the poll and share it. So uh, <laughs> free webinars, 100%. Well. That, I guess, would make sense because you're all on a free webinar, right? PeopleSoft Info Portal, disappointing. Only 45% had selected that. I would like to have seen more. If you haven't done it, go out and check it out. Glad to see so many of you are using user groups. Um, and, and people books are the demo environment. Um, I do recommend live instructor training because uh, – we are among the best at, at uh, live instructor training, and I, oh my goodness, look, there's a there's a training on PeopleSoft that's coming up, uh, PeopleSoft Test Framework. So if you're interested in PeopleSoft Test Framework development, this question was asked on the earlier uh, session. There is a session scheduled June 24th specifically for PTF. It's a full day session um, where you will learn how to uh, build a people talk, PeopleSoft test script and how to build shell scripts and make them interactive with variable data. Um, there's additional free webinars. Those of you that said you like the free, uh, we've got them scheduled Fridays through May. They're going to be extended to Fridays through June. Right now we've got uh, – I couldn't believe the numbers signing up for the Envision Tips and Tricks session. Uh, super exciting one on Kibana coming up. We mentioned Unified Navigation, Tom did earlier. We've got we've got a webinar on that, uh, and then chatbots. I I'm going to sit in on that one. I'm excited to see what's uh, what's coming down down the path on chatbots. So 
Um, here's the here's the link to our live webinars. It's the same link. You'll have to look for the uh, the paid trainings that are offered. But uh, I encourage you all to join us for more of these sessions. Um, I also encourage you to let me know what other topics you're interested in seeing or hearing in the near future. With that said, I am so sorry we're running out of time. Oh, wait, here, just a comment. We had, uh, oh, uh, wow, I just got a comment from a customer that was commenting on how well our training was on People Tools training. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, we, uh, we appreciate it. We love you all, but you more than all others, Jeff. I do appreciate the time. I want you to give me your feedback. I want you to tell me what you want to see, and we will do our best to put together webinars that you want to see, because that will help us drive attendance. Thank you so much. We will see you soon.